1998, representing members of the Collective Bargaining Unit at the Bloomington Police Department. I'm joined tonight by many of those members and their families. If you recall, I spoke to you in May of this year after the city bargaining team declared our contract negotiation at an impasse. And we voted to, or we moved to mediation. That process is now concluded and it produced another written proposal from the city. Unfortunately, that proposal was not enough. And it was voted down by the membership because it did not adequately meet the financial needs, nor was it designed to meet the recruiting and retention needs so many of you have recently pointed out. You asked Chief Deacon for some specific facts about staffing levels and overtime costs going forward into the budget discussion. We plan to give you some of those answers tonight. Please keep asking those questions. We appreciate Ms. Amber's comments about officer wellness and how the extra work may be affecting the officers. And I can tell you, it, it has. They are tired and fed up. It is a weekly occurrence for supervisors to send out emails asking for volunteers just to cover the minimum number of officers to staff a patrol shift. One of the last emails was from a second shift sergeant which said, quote, second shift will be in need of help almost every day in September. Some days we are in need of at least two officers. That's just to cover the basic patrol shift, not extra special events. From the beginning of this contract negotiation, our FOP team has told the city that the situation we find BPD in is largely caused by recruiting and retention failures. We continue to lose officers to agencies that pay market competitive wages. Chief Ecoff was correct in his statement to you, recruiting and retaining officers is difficult in this current environment. It's even harder when you hamstring yourself through low wage offers, all while demanding more from an already overworked personnel. That's why a simple thing like increasing the salary and benefits package can help. The pool of applicants has dwindled, and those who are applying to BPD now have more attractive options to look at. Current BPD officers do the same thing. They look at other agencies with appropriate staffing levels and competitive salaries, and then they leave Bloomington. If you're going to do a hard job, why not go make a decent living at it? Which brings us to you. Everyone knows the money is there. Everyone recognizes the need to hire more officers and to keep the officers we have. We need you to tell the mayor and the city negotiating team yeah. to work with us on a market competitive salary and benefits package. The time to fix the overtime and staffing shortage is now. I'll leave you with this thought before my colleagues speak. <clears throat> on the recent holiday weekend celebrating workers in the American labor movement, your police officers had their time off canceled or had to work extended hours on their regular days off. Not much of a celebration was had. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Good evening. My name is Troy Lund. I'm the uh, APD Day Shift Representative. When we started this negotiation 18 months ago, we looked for ways to quantify what we recognize around the state. The BPD was no longer giving large groups of applicants. And we were rapidly losing tenured officers to other agencies. We utilized the certified Indian public retirement system salary list, which is compiled each year and from which our officer's retirement salary is based. It is a list of police and fire departments in Indiana who paid the 1977 police and fire pension fund. Bloomington is recognized as the seventh largest city by population in Indiana. Yet in 2018, BP was 54th in pay on this list, 50. We told the city negotiating team repeatedly that Bloomington was going to have to make changes to become market competitive. And sadly, the response had been status quo. We told them what would happen if we crossed into 2019. The other cities would continue their efforts to improve police recruiting and retention through increasing salary benefits, and Bloomington would fall further behind the whole. Which brings us to 2019. <clears throat> on the city certified list, I'm sorry, on the certified list this year, BP dropped to even further, now 66 in the state. As you pointed out, we continue to grow as a city, adding population each year. More important to patrol officers, though, is the daily population numbers. A census number is great on paper, but the reality is Bloomington has thousands of people coming to town each and every day for work, school, sporting events, etc. Those people still require police services despite not being officially represented on the census. 
So you're already understaffed. The police department has to work much more harder, I'm sorry, than they interpreted in those numbers. We also look with hope of the city and efforts of commissioning those salary studies. We knew exactly what they would show, that BP is underpaid compared to our peers. The MAC study uh, of union specific positions compared to BP with 19 other agencies showed us in the bottom quarter of that group, hardly market competitive to compare to size cities. One would expect that the city would look at their own study and recognize they needed to make some financial changes in their salary, offers to keep a few police officers we do have, and an attempt to gain new ones in a shrinking market. Unfortunately, that has not happened. And that is why officers rejected the last proposal. They know they're worth more, and if they want, they can go somewhere else that will be more compensated will compensate them fairly. Uh, the cycle of being short staffed continues leading to rising overtime and burnout costs. Uh, an example, let's look at this last few weekends in August, the department had to declare to the Board of Public Safety and the union that they did not have enough cops to cover the plans to secure the Parker's market issue. And the numerous Labor Day weekend festivities, so for three weekends, time off was canceled. Officers worked on the regular days off and officers had been working extended shift hours.
don't necessarily want to show your cards and let everyone know you're trying to leave and go somewhere else. Uh, right now, for an officer at my age, I've been on the department for three years. There's not a lot of incentive for someone at my level to stay here. Uh, there's better salary, there's better equipment, there's better job satisfaction in other places. However, I, I chose to come here. I, I want to work in this city, and I want to have a future here. And I also want to make sure everyone knows this is not a negative reflection on the chief or the administration. We know what they have. They have to work within the rules and boundaries they're given. Um, the budget, the number of new hires, all of those things are the balance with, 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 excuse me, in which they have to work. Uh, currently, the way those numbers look, we Wilmington does not have a competitive salary. Uh, we don't have competitive benefits for officers. We're, we're constantly asked to do more with less. We're getting to the point where less is so little, we can't do any more with it. If we continue to not be competitive, the number of quality applicants is going to only drop more, and we'll be hiring less and less of the most qualified individuals. When you're hiring eight spots, and you have 35 applicants, do you really think you're getting the cream of the crop of applicants, and you have that many vacancies to fill and that few options to choose from. Uh, I know that there are members on this council who won't be in these positions next year, uh, but you'll still be residents of Bloomington, and this will still continue to affect you in the future. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Are there any other comments from the public? Um, okay, before we move on, let me just say that I, I'm very sorry that we find ourselves at a, at a point in an impasse. And uh, we really appreciate you coming this evening and sharing your comments, and we appreciate any data that you can share. Um, and so that we want to help that resolution. So um, we hope to be in contact with you uh, in the near future, and uh, so that we can resolve and move forward. So thank you all for coming this evening. Appreciate it. Okay, we will now move to appointments to the Board of Commissions. Do we have any appointments? So no appointments. Let's just wait a moment. 